Hi, I'm Squadron Leader Wild and I'm an Engineer Officer in the Royal Air Force. Um, my role at the moment, I'm the Senior Engineer Officer on 9 Bomber Squadron based at RAF Lossiemouth. However, I'm currently deployed with 121 Expeditionary Air Wing out in Romania on a NATO Enhanced Air Policing mission. As a Senior Engineering Officer, um, I'm responsible for 110 engineering technicians and 8 fast jet Typhoon aircraft. My primary role is basically managing the maintenance to make sure that we've got enough aircraft that can operate and fly safely to meet whatever operational tasking is thrown our way. But I've been out here since the start. I've been making sure that we're ready to safely operate and maintain the aircraft as required by NATO. Um, basically everything we do back at home in the UK based at RAF Lossiemouth, it's all geared towards uh, supporting tasking like this out on operations. When I was doing my A-levels, that was the first time I really started considering a career in science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM. Up until that point, I had no idea what I wanted to do, if I'm honest. Um, when I was 13, I joined the Air Cadets and that was the first real exposure I had to aviation and aircraft. And it got me interested in, in how aircraft fly and how they stay in the air. Um, up until that point, I thought engineering meant fixing cars or being a scientist meant you had to be the smartest person in your class. Um, once I started to do a little bit of research into it, I actually realised this was a really false perception um, and none of those things were applied. And actually, a career in STEM offers so many varied opportunities and chances. So that was the point, really, I started exploring it as a career option. Those options then allowed me to apply for a degree in aerospace engineering at university. Through school, um, my interest started stemming from when I started the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. Um, that led to a real interest in the outdoors, hill walking, mountaineering, and that's something that I've carried on right the way through my life, right up till now where I'm based in Scotland uh, at RAF Lossiemouth, trying to get out in the Cairngorms every weekend. When I got to university, um, I joined the University Air Squadron, and through that organisation I managed to learn how to ski, which again is something that I now try and do every year when I get the opportunity. Um, since university, I've dabbled in multiple sports and activities, a bit of rock climbing, again, hill walking and mountaineering, most recently triathlon, which again is a sport that the Air Force um, actively encouraged and involved me in, and I represented them in the inter-services for the half Ironman distance. So yeah, quite, quite a varied, um, quite a varied uh, list of activities. The subjects I study at school have been absolutely essential in getting me to the job that I'm in now and I use them on a daily basis. So uh, maths and physics were um, requirements for me to do my aerospace engineering degree um, and then they formed the basis of everything I learned through that course from principles of flight down to mechanics down to thermofluids and they're all principles that are applied daily when you're trying to get one of these aircraft in the air. Um, right the way down from fixing the mechanical systems to understanding the avionics to understanding the flight control systems and how that works against principles of flight and airflow. I decided to join the Royal Air Force for two reasons. Um, one of them was from a professional point of view. There's very, very few other roles and opportunities where you can get to work with real cutting edge te technology like like the Typhoon, for example. Um, the second one was the opportunities available um, outside of work, which you don't get in a normal nine to five job. And if you're interested in further study, that's always an opportunity out there. So whether it be from NVQ right up to getting your PhD. So since I've been in the Air Force, I've gained another bachelor degree in uh, engineering management and a master's degree in business and engineering. Um, so again, the opportunities really are endless if you take them. As an engineer officer, I've had a huge range of um, jobs in my career so far. I've been in the Air Force for 13 years now. During that time, I've had roles on two frontline typhoon squadrons, which have probably been the highlight. But I've also had um, some really interesting technical engineering jobs, such as uh, being responsible for the propulsion system on the F-35 uh, Lightning aircraft and get, being involved in the uh, software and computer network design for the A400M aircraft. I've been all over the world in my 13 years with the RAF, um, Turkey, India, Oman, UAE, uh, the Falkland Islands, America, Afghanistan um, and now here in Romania. My most enjoyable and memorable experiences in the RAF are actually quite difficult to pinpoint because there's been so many. Um, one highlight has just definitely been being able to fly in different aircraft types. So a clear winner was getting a backseat trip in a Typhoon aircraft, which was amazing, um, but also getting winched out of the sea in the South Atlantic by Sea King was pretty fun. Um, it's also been the other opportunities. So I spent three weeks trekking through the Himalayas at high altitude as part of the RAF 100 anniversary celebrations. And that was just an incredible opportunity. Um, but if I had to say one thing, I would probably say it's the people. Um, the people are what make the Air Force and I genuinely have made uh, friends for life um, through my career so far. 
my future aspirations for my career going forwards. Um, I'm still really enjoying my time in the Air Force, so I'm looking forward to future roles that are going to come up. When my time in the Air Force does eventually come to an end, um, I'll be leaving as a professional chartered engineer um, with a pretty wide uh, skill set that you get from being an officer in the Royal Air Force. I'm really looking forward that to taking that into um, engineering um, in, in the civilian world. Uh, ideally, I'd like to get into sustainability. I have a real interest in sustainability engineering, um, looking basically for solutions to the climate crisis. If I could give one piece of advice to anyone thinking about getting into a career in STEM, I would say just go for it. Don't let any um, perceptions put you off. Um, don't think that it's a man's world or anything like that. Just go for it. The opportunities are so vast and so varied. Um, and you can tailor them to your interests. So be you interested in, you know, developing a solution to solve the climate crisis or developing the next app to challenge TikTok, STEM will get you there. Um, it requires hard work, it can be challenging, but it really, really is worthwhile and the rewards will really make up for it.